This is the cannabis plant, and for the last 10,000 years and more, it was the most widely used beneficial plant for making products and medicine the world had ever known, until just 80 years ago when it was taken away from us because it threatened the profits of big business. This was in the 1930s, around the time Popular Mechanics published an article declaring it our new billion dollar crop, that you could make almost anything with it. 25,000 products, at which point the status quo said, no, we'll have none of that. People like William Randolph Hearst with his interests in the timber industry and DuPont and his petroleum chemical company, the pharmaceutical industry who wanted their doctors taking care of our health. And this prohibition has been very profitable for law enforcement agencies and your friendly local sheriff. This is why we can't even grow the non-psychoactive industrial hemp like 30 other countries around the world are doing. And we're buying hemp products from them. Oh yes, the corruption runs deep. We know that and we're sick of it. But there are many videos out there that delve into this history. Don't want to talk about that right now. What everyone has to know is what this resource can give us, those 25,000 products. And I'd like to go through those one by one. No, I wouldn't, but uh, you'll get the picture. Okay, so we've got cannabis, hemp, marijuana, all the same plant, two main varieties or strains, sativa, taller, thinner, and indica, shorter, thicker. The entire plant was referred to as hemp for centuries, but now the term is more specific to the industrial hemp variety, cannabis sativa, that's been bred to have almost no THC, the part that gets you high. Now the medicinal and recreational and spiritual variety, that can be sativa or indica, bred to have high THC. And marijuana, that's the slang term that was used by Hearst and others to demonize the plant and get rid of it. So we are getting rid of that. The name marijuana, it's like if you had a nice respectable name like Teresa and some guy insists on calling you Toots, you wouldn't like that. It's kind of sleazy, that name, so toss it. Now, how do you make all these products from this plant? Well, let's take it apart piece by piece and see how it's done, starting with the outside of the stalk. You have to separate this outer fiber from the inner core, decorticate, and it ain't easy. You gotta beat the hell out of it. One of the hardest jobs for the longest time because the fiber is so strong. Strongest one that grows on the planet. It's how they made rope forever and they used it to make sails, canvas, which is related to the word. A decorticator came along in the early 1900s, but the cotton gin was already on the scene and those interests prevailed over the future of hemp, unfortunately, because this fiber can be used to make all the things we're making with cotton now, textiles, fabrics, clothing, shoes, socks, bags, carpets, towels. You might ask, is there a problem with cotton? Well, yeah, somewhere between a third and a half of the world's pesticides and herbicides are poured on cotton and into our soil and that's just while growing it. The processing uses more chemicals like chlorine, bleach, formaldehyde. It's a toxic river flowing out of the cotton industry and into our environment. Whereas hemp requires very little to no pesticides. The thick canopy of leaves that blocks out the sun below chokes out the weeds. And it has this expansive root system that remediates the soil, restores it can pull contaminants out of it. They've planted hemp around Chernobyl to do just that. So cotton got the jump on cannabis for use as a fiber, but today's machinery can do all this extreme labor that used to require people. And that's what we should be using now because in addition to these issues with the chemicals, one acre of hemp will produce twice as much fiber as cotton with half the water half the water and the fiber has three times the, the strength of cotton also softer lasts longer won't mildew 
And it actually has antiseptic and antibacterial quality. And um, basically, I'm just waiting for someone to invent a hemp tampon. So, should we continue to use the cotton for our fabrics with all the chemicals involved, the water issues, or use the natural organic fiber from the hemp plant? Yes, there will be a quiz on this. No, you don't have to study. The slightest bit of common sense is all you need. Now, with that outer fiber removed, we're down to the inner stalk. It's called the herd or the shiv. It's a woody core with a texture like balsa wood, and it can be used for so many applications in construction now. You can actually build a house with it. Seriously, mix the herd or shiv with lime and water, and you have hempcrete, which is much better than what we're using now because, again, more chemicals used in the production of concrete, very carbon intensive. Hempcrete weighs six times less, but it's even stronger after it sets up. It keeps getting stronger for years, and it's clean to work with. I, lo I look at the range of materials out there. I cannot find one to match hemp. I can't find one that has such a low embodied energy, that, that uh, locks carbon in, that has such a low environmental impact, that can be grown locally and harvested with minimum inputs in a matter of just a few months. Instead of pouring out heavy, wet, toxic, caustic concrete, it would instead pour out this sort of fluffy, lightweight stuff that looks like sawdust. And because there are no power tools, there are no cables everywhere. It actually makes for a very, very healthy, very safe uh, building site. People talk about how these walls are breathable and no mildew, mold or rot. What we want to do in a building is create a wall that welcomes water but doesn't rot when it lets the water in. And that's exactly what Hemcrete does. When humidity changes in the air outside, the wall can take on that extra humidity and hold it until the humidity drops outside and then it'll let it back out. The people are getting sick from the toxic chemicals in our homes, from things like insulation and paint, drapes and furniture. All these things can be replaced with hemp. And you can press it into fiberboard to replace plywood. It makes great insulation and it's not like fiberglass insulation. If you've ever worked with that, you don't want to be breathing it or touching it makes your skin itch. So, continue to build homes out of toxic materials, which can make us sick, or out of the natural, organic hemp. Gee, I just don't know. Hemp also makes the best paper, because it contains 70% cellulose compared to 30% for trees, and the quality of hemp paper is much better, lasts much longer, can be recycled many more times, and once again, requires fewer chemicals in the manufacturing process. Plus, it makes more of it. One acre of hemp will produce as much paper as two to four acres of trees on an annual basis because it can take 10 or 20 years to grow trees and just four months for the hemp crop. You can have two crops a year in many places, even three in the tropical latitudes. And here's something most people don't know about this plant that it absorbs or sequesters carbon dioxide from the atmosphere at five times the rate of trees. Who knew how much this cannabis plant really sucks the carbon right out of the air? So the hempcrete in this building, this one building alone, will sequester 20,000 pounds of carbon. That's a pretty big accomplishment. So, should we be cutting down trees for paper and wood anymore? Destroying the ecosystems of our forests and jungles? when we can be using hemp and improving the atmosphere and soil. It drives me crazy. It makes me want to pick up a hammer and club myself and scream. I am not from this planet. This is not my species. <laughs>Now, when I say composites, I'm talking about things that are usually made from oil-based plastics and fiberglass. Hemp composites cost half of what it takes to make comparable fiberglass. It takes less energy to produce. It's a clean resource to make things like chairs, tables, furniture. You can use hemp composites for surfboards and guitars. I bet Tommy Chong has one. Yeah. 
and cars, all parts of the car body, paneling, dashboards, and also the frame, the body, like the car Henry Ford built out of hemp. They say it's stronger than steel, which is hard to imagine, but here they are beating the hell out of it with a sledgehammer. Stronger, lighter, and we could be running our cars on a clean burning biofuel, ethanol from hemp, which is what Henry Ford envisioned when he said, why use up the forests, which were centuries in the making, and the mines, which required ages to lay down, if we can get the equivalent of forest and mineral products in the annual growth of the hemp fields. Of course that's what we should be doing. And what else? Uh, plastics. Hemp can replace plastic from water bottles to plastic bags, utensils, and these can be made 100% biodegradable. Throw them away anywhere and they're recycled back into nature. So. Should we start making all these products out of organic biodegradable hemp or continue to use the oil-based plastics that don't degrade and clog up our landfills and fill our oceans with over 250,000 tons of this plastic every year, killing fish and wildlife? Huh? What should we do? I don't, I don't want to use this, but I'll do it. No, I won't. Uh, that would be stupid, and it, it would really hurt. But you understand the situation here. It's, it's mental. It's delusional. That's why we'd better move on to a higher ground. Up the beanstalk to the top of the plant and the flowers, leaves, and seeds. Oh, my. And the seeds can be squeezed to make hemp seed oil. And not only can this oil be used to make paints, varnishes, solvents, lubricants, diesel fuel, ethanol, it's also food, a superfood. And the nutritional benefits that come from these seeds, along with the flowers and leaves, make it the best vegetable on the planet. Yes, it is. Don't argue with me now, because whether it's sativa or indica, male or female, bred for high THC or low, Cannabis is a vegetable that contains every dietary essential that we can't make ourselves. That's why they're called essential amino acids and essential fatty acids like the omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids, which are high in vitamins and protein and crucial for brain function. And you need more of the 3 than the 6 or 9. 3, 1, 1 is the optimum ratio as far as we know at this point. And cannabis, hemp, like no other food, contains that perfect balance. And hemp is allergen-free, gluten-free, GMO-free, at least for now, herbicide and pesticide-free. You can put it up against Popeye and his spinach and Broccoli Boy. The Cannabis Girl is the hands-down winner. They all have a lot of the same nutrients like calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese, and vitamin E. But cannabis is the only one that contains all 21 known amino acids and has more protein per gram than meat and fish and chicken. And body care products, because these oils are so good for your skin, it's being used to make cosmetics, hand and face cream, shampoo, soap. And thank you, Dr. Bronner, for your activism on this issue. David Bronner locked himself in a cage outside the White House with hemp plants and a sign on top, let U.S. farmers grow hemp. You gotta love that kind of activism. And we're learning now that eating and juicing the raw flowers and leaves, no psychoactive effects if it's not heated, has incredible benefits with its own class of nutritional and medicinal substances known as cannabinoids, which are intricately involved with regulating all the different functions of our body. You could live off this plant alone if you had to.